Shalom Aleichem. Okay. So, being that it's the week before Purim, the subject matter we're going to talk about is, of course, Purim. So, it's really a subject that I spoke about today a lot. Um, I think it's a very, very important subject. A lot of people are not going to like what I'm about to say, but um, you got to say what you got to say, even if people don't like what you got to say. All right? So, the girls, when I opened up my shirt today, they weren't very happy. By the time I got finished, they weren't very sad. Because I said it the way it has to be. And it's like this. Many things happen to many people during their lives. But we learn from Miguel Esther that a person cannot sit and feel sorry for themselves. Because people who feel sorry for themselves, even if they were very wronged when they were growing up, and things happen to them, abuse, whatever it is. The end of the day, it's a dead end. You, nothing has ever grown, nothing has ever been created, nothing has ever been developed because of depression, because of, because of giving up, because of feeling sorry for oneself. There's no growth in that. And Ezeul Chacham, who is a smart person, Elias and Ayla. A person who sees the consequence. The consequence of Taka person got abused and Taki went through this and Taki went through that. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you don't pick your head up and get things done and you just sit and you, you go to therapy and you take medicine and you feel sorry for yourself and you sleep and you go off to derech, and all these things, in the end of the day, you did nothing. You're going, no, you're going nowhere. It's a dead end. The people that get where they're going are the people that go through stuff. Everybody goes through stuff. Nobody that doesn't go through stuff. But the person that realizes that, that that stuff is their stuff, and the reason that it happened to them, wasn't up to them most of the time, but they need to use that to build muscle. In your body, there are many muscles. There's leg muscles, there's thigh muscles, there's arm muscles, there's chest muscles, there's back muscles. And depending on what part of your body you're exercising, that's the part of your body that builds the muscle. So some people go through abuse, some people have parents that are divorced, some people don't have parents, some people go through sickness. These are all different muscles that a person, if he's able to overcome it, and he's able to stand up and he's able to go forward, so he develops a muscle in that area that he suffered, that he went through. And through that muscle, spiritual, or whatever you want to call it, emotional muscle, he's able to help others. I'd like to take a different look for a second at Megillus Esther and why it's called Megillus Esther and why it's called Tanis Esther because really it's Megillus Purim it's the Megillus of the story of Purim Esther was a player in it Mordechai was a player in it Haman was a player there's a lot of actors in this was Esther the main player? I think Mordechai was maybe the main player because he's like from all the way the beginning to the end. Right? So, why is it called Megillus Esther? So, let's take a look at Esther. So, it says Esther to Hadassah. Esther was Hadassah. Omein is Hadassah. So, the Yalkut Shemoni says the following Karla Hadassah, but Karla Esther. She's called Hadassah, she's called Esther. Tana Rebbe Aimer, Esther Shema, her real name was Esther. For Lama Nikra Shema Hadassah, why was she called Hadassah? And he just says, Al Shem Tzadikim. Doesn't explain it, he just says, the name of Tzadikim, the Chenu Aimer, who Aimer ben Hadassim Asher bim Tzula. Where is that brought down? To Zion. To Zion, to Zion, to Zion. Ben Tzadikim Shigalu Lubavah. Okay. And he goes on, and he says, Rabbi Yehuda Oymer Hadas Hashem, Avulam and Nikrishma Esther. He argues. He doesn't. Rabbi says the name was Esther. Why is she called Hadas? Yehuda says the name is Hadas. Why is she called Esther? Avulam and Nikrishma Esther. She mistareres as devoreha. She kept her words silent. She didn't tell Achshverosh, right? Who wish that she's Jewish? Ain Esther Megadas Molodeta. She didn't say where she was born. Rav Nechemya Oimer Hadassah Shema. 
Her name was Hadassah. Ulama Nikrishma Esther. Why did they call her Esther? So he brings down something that's a little hard to understand. He says the Ayyad Kechavim called her that because there's a Kaychev, there's a star that's called Estahar. Okay. Ben Azay Aymer, Loya Rucha, Loik Tzara. She wasn't tall, she wasn't short. Elabaninus, she was mid sized, Kahadasa, like a Hadasa. I say Hadasa in English? Uh, Myrtle. Myrtle. She was green. She was green. She was ugly. And I, Hashem made a nace. Again, like Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't talk because the Mitzvah could have said, oh, he's a great speaker. That's how he got the Jews out of Mitzrayim. So people could have said, yeah, he fell in love with this beautiful girl. That's how they got out of this. No. Hashem made her specifically not good looking. If you crush the leaves, they have a very good smell. Her deeds were very good. Rab how old was she? Bas Haisa, she was 40 years old when the story took place. Ushmuel Omer, Shmuel argues, and he says, Bashmainam Haisa, she was 80 years old when this took place. Rabbanan Aimrim, the Rabbanan say, Bas Shivim Vaaba, she was 74 years old. Minyan Hadassah. The word Hadassah, right? Hey, Dalit is 9. Samach is 60. He's 69 plus 5. Hey, is 74. She was 74 years old when this happens. Rabbi Chaya, Bishem Rav Necham Yoemer, Amar Kosh Barachal Avram Avino. Listen to this. Maybe that's where that Medrash gets the Avichayo from. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to Avraham Avinu, Ata yatzeis mi beis avicha me charan. You left your father's house. From charan ben ayin hei shana. You were 75 years old. Afani mamit goyal mimcha. I'm going to bring a redeemer from you. Ben ayin ha shana hadasa. 75 years old, even though she was 74. By the name of hadasa. Tov acher, kishem she hadas eni yavesh. A myrtle doesn't dry up. It's not in the summer, but not in the winter. When she was young, when she was old, she was beautiful. Didn't make a difference. He asked her, She was beautiful when she became when she became a queen. He actually and she was beautiful before she became a king, a queen. And when her mother and father died, he he brought her up. She hid herself. She hid herself for four years. From the third year of the kingdom of Achishverosh, she hid. The soldiers, and they brought all these beautiful girls in front of the king. He got angry at them. He didn't like any of them. Esther, till they found Esther. Tamuna, she was hidden. The Shushan Habira. In Shushan Habira, they had Sarisim from these guys that were looking. Akash said to her, At Madmenas At Smcha, Ain Nikhna Samachas Ella At. You hid yourself. You're going to become the queen, sort of like Harsinai. You weren't looking for this. But he looked at Esther and they took Esther. Okay. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. So let's take a look at this for a minute. She was born on the third month of her of the pregnant of her mother's pregnancy, her father died. At childbirth her mother died. So she was born and she had no parents. It says that Mordechai, her uncle, adopted her. I don't think he even had food. There's a thing that he nursed her, whatever. I don't have to get into that whole thing. But he managed nursed her, right? And um, took care of her. Now, you have to understand that Esther Hamalka was a... We learned last year, I believe, that she was a Gilgal of Sari Menu. It's brought down. It's a different subject. We're not going to get into it. She was very, 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 very holy. Very, very, very holy. 
And as we just learned in the Yalkut, she was no youngster. And she hid because she didn't want to be picked by the king. So she hid for a long time. And now she's brought to the king, Achashverosh. She's a tsnua. They offered her half a year in spices and half a year in oils and makeup. And so when you go before the king, you should look beautiful. She wasn't interested in makeup. She wasn't interested in any of this stuff. She was a total tsnua. She was a tzedekistah. She came out of Beis Yaakov, of Beis Yaakov, of the Beis Yaakov. She was the firmest girl in the world. Probably the firmest Jewish girl that existed. And now she's brought to the house of Achashverosh. And I'm sure she's saying, Hashem, you're going to protect me. I mean, I'm a tznua. I didn't put on the makeup. I didn't, when they were looking for a girl, I didn't show up. I hid myself. I didn't put on any lipstick. I, didn't, I don't smell good. I'm not sitting in spices. I'm going to walk in. I'm going to look ugly. He's not going to pick me. I did everything I'm supposed to. I'm a tzadikista. She walks in. He picks her. Could you imagine what was going on through her mind? Here I did everything I was supposed to do. I didn't put on the makeup. I didn't put on the lipstick. I, not, I didn't dress provocative. I'm green. I'm not pretty. I'm 80 or 65, right? Or 64, whatever, 74, right? He's going to pick me. So nobody else yeah. in the palace thought Achashverosh was nuts for t- picking her? For sure they did. <laughs> you can say that. So well, first of all... We don't find anything about that. You don't say that. Well, well first of all... First of all, two things, two things. It's very clear in the Megillah that he picked her because she was Matzachin. And that hey guy, who was, you have to understand, had every girl in the world there. And he slept with every girl, it says. Every girl that came at night, left in the morning, slept with every girl. So, so they had all these young girls from all over the world. But hey guy, who was the, before the king, who set them up for the beauty pageant, also found crazy favor in her eyes. Goy recognized Chain. Oh, Goy recognizes Chain. That's why they go after Jewish women. <laughs> how does a fly recognize? How does a fly? How? How? Well, it, it, it doesn't. I don't know if she was green. There's a big mark like if she was beautiful or she wasn't beautiful. But she definitely didn't make herself beautiful. For this. she definitely wasn't provocative. That's for sure. And maybe that was the attraction. He had thousands of provocative women, and then one shows up. And she's different than all of them. And she's wise, and she's bechenedik. And and, and, and what's the chen be'enav? Listen, Paro, how old was Sarah when he saw you? You have a kasha on this. How old was Sarah when when, when they took her out of the box? I mean, hello? Right? Sorry, Menu. I mean, I'm sure she's beautiful, but hello? Right? And, 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 And Avram knew that the minute they see her, they're going to grab her. And he said, why? Because you have a chen. Yeah, and the rest of them, she was old, but okay, you could say she was 100, she was 20, she was like 7, so she looked young, whatever it is. But that's not what he said. He said, they're going to take you because of your chen. <coughs> we thinking that, you understand? The guy sees all this, it doesn't mean anything to me. Also, this woman walks in, she's, she has chen, she's quiet, she's at snua. He's interested. So, the 70s, what? Sir, yeah, she was up there, yeah. 90s, yeah, 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 she was in the 70s. Yeah, but okay, but you can argue, but it said that she was beautiful. But it said when she was 100, she was like 20, when she was 20, like 7, so she was talking, still looked very young. But she was there in the 70s. Yeah, but she didn't look it. So that's not really. But what do you see in Sarah? That, yeah, I've all knew the meaning of reflection. Uh oh. Because Sarah was at Snua, and Sarah was. They, they were so used to the Prutzen that to them, this was like, whoa. So. Let's look at Esther's side. Let's look at let's look at Esther's side. So like everything everything's going wrong here, man. She hid out, they found her. She doesn't put on any makeup, and the guy puts out the scepter and picks her. So everything's going wrong. And it's not going wrong because she's doing the wrong thing, because she's watching movies and she's going against the Torah. She's doing everything the Torah tells her to do. She hid, she doesn't put on the makeup, she dresses through it. God, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. And I'm the one that he picks out of thousands of beautiful girls. What are you doing? And she's with him. And she becomes pregnant. She has a baby called Darius. 
Let me give the share. Let me give the share. Relax, relax. So, most of Chazal say, Shitako was with him. The Vulagayan says, can't be. <laughs> so he says that she created a Golem, just like Sari Menu created a Golem in the times of Avram Avinu, or Avram created a Golem. That looked, or was it actually the Lashan that's brought down. I saw in a Medrash that it was a Shindalad. That a Shindalad, they, they used the name of a Shindalad, and they turned this, a Shindalad can change himself to look like anybody except their feet. So they, the Shindalad, they changed, they forced to change it to look like her. But that's not Pashit Pshat. <laughs> and whatever it was got pregnant and had a baby called Darius, who became the next king who started building the base of Mignish again. The Pashit Pshat is she was with him and talks about in the Gemara that she just laid like a piece of kaka and she didn't get any hana, right? Talks about it. The Medrash says, she used something, whatever. Got, got some, but Lemaisa, Lemaisa, at the end of the day, you're talking about a Tzedekista who was a Gilgal of sorry. You, 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 hello? To even be touched by a guy. So, so, what's going on here? I did everything right. Look, look where I ended up. In the palace of the biggest low life. I'm in the palace of the biggest low life. And I have to be physically with him. She gets pregnant from him. Doesn't make any sense. She did everything right. So what happens? So Mordechai says to her, Neyudeh, this is so Neyudeh. And I'll tell you what ignited this whole, this whole share. Mordechai says the following. She sends, she finds out that Mordechai is wearing sackcloth. She didn't know exactly what's going on. So she sends a messenger to find out, Ladas, Mazev, Al Mazev, what's going on? Mordechai tells him everything that's going on. There's Parashat Sakesef and the money that Haman is paying for this to happen, Abdom to destroy them. And she hears the whole story. And he sends her a message. And he says, tell her. No, don't tell her. Command her. That she should go to the king and pray for the Jews. And to daven for her nation. And Asach came and he told Esther the words of Mordechai. So now Esther sends back a message. I told me Esther last time to fail Mordechai. Send them a message. Call out the Amalek. But in my dinos Amalek, everybody knows. I should call Ishvi Isha. Any man or woman, I should yell at Amalek that will come to the king. Allah Chutzir, Hapnimish, to the inside Chutzir, and in Kabbalah it's talking about Hashem and whatever. I'm not getting into it. Because any time it says Hamelech without Achashverosh. Talking about Hashem, maybe next week we'll go into the whole Hashem and Melech and what's going on here, really. What was really going on here? This is a whole story in Shemayim. He'll be killed! Unless the king puts out his scepter. Then you'll live. He didn't invite me the last 30 days to come to him. That was the message she sent him. By Yigidul Mordechai is divrei Esther, and Mordechai told these words to Esther. I mean, and, and it was told, and it was told to Mordechai the words of Esther. Now you have to understand something. There's something much deeper going on here. So, this is what I told the girls today, because we all feel sorry. This generation, everybody feels sorry for themselves. This is the generation of. It's everybody's fault but mine. Everybody feels sorry. And it's my father's fault. And my abuser's fault. And my Rebbe's fault. And television's fault. And the movie's fault. And it's everybody's fault. The psychology world teaches us. It's not your fault. You are a victim. We're all victims. The whole world, we're all victims. So if I'm a victim... What am I supposed to do in, this, in my life? 
I'm a victim, I'm a loser. Right? That's what, that's what we learn in this world. The difference between my generation and this generation is we got beat up worse than anyone got beat up in this generation. We got killed. I never was taken to the office by my Rebbe without him ripping my ear off. We got killed. Sticks, belts, rods, whatever they could throw at us. Chairs, spelling books. They beat the heck out of all of us. Not one guy. And my whole yeshiva growing up, elementary school, went off the derech. Not one. We didn't have a world calling us victims. We were victims. We told the Rebbe, it didn't even hurt me. So he hit you harder. You think that hurt me? Until he hit you hard enough that you said, that hurt me. <laughs> didn't have a victim mentality. A victim mentality, you're finished. It's what the Nazis try to do to the Jews. Try to turn us into a bunch of victims. This world, everybody walks around, victims. Got to take medicine, got to go see my psychologist. My mother's fault, it's this fault. My parents are divorced, my parents are this. My girlfriend's fault, my wife's fault. We're all victims. We're married, it's our wife's fault. We're not married, it's our parents' fault. You don't have parents, it's your Rebbe's fault. It's somebody's fault. It's the cat's fault. It's somebody's fault. Anyone gets to a car accident, it's never your fault. Never your fault. He did this, he, he went through a stop sign. He did I, 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 I. Never, on a police report, it never says it's your fault. Who takes the fault? Kid comes home to his parents. Oh my God, what'd you do to the car? I promised you, it wasn't my fault. First thing. It wasn't my fault. Anyway, the insurance pays, no fault. We're all victims. Everyone's a victim. So we live in a world of depression. Everyone's depressed. Give him a Prozac, give him a this, give him a that, give him a well breacher, give him a that, give him the other thing. Because never! The badge! Never club! We're all nevers. Let's talk about a real nevach. Let's talk about Esther Hamalka. No parents. So poor that God had to make a miracle that Mordechai had to nurse her. That's pretty poor. Couldn't go to Toys R Us and buy formula. That's pretty poor. Snua, this Yaakov girl, from hiding out, the guy shouldn't see her. Too bad, we found you. No makeup, no perfume, no provocative. The king will never pick me. I'm sure she was saying to Hillel when she was staying in front of him, for sure. You, that's the one I want to marry. Come on, God, man, I'm a victim. Where are you? I did everything right. Too bad. And now she has to physically be the lowest guy in the whole world who slept with every single girl that came to see him. That's what the Medrash says. Every single girl. And then he told her in the morning, goodbye. But she belonged to his harem. She wasn't free. So that's who she had to be with. So now, Mordechai should have a little Rachmanis. It's his niece that doesn't have parents. I mean, come on. Oh, Rachmanis, she's a victim. So she sends back a message. You want me to go to the king? I wasn't invited. Now let me tell you what she was really saying. Allah is, she brought down in many midrashim that she was married to Mordechai. So you're allowed to marry your uncle. Allah is that the first time she was with Achishverosh was by force. It wasn't her will. He picked her and he forced her. So by force, you're not, if someone gets raped, so you're not usher to the boil and to the bow, unless, you're, unless it's an Ashish Kayan. By force. But if an Isha sleeps with, is married and sleeps with another man by will, she's usher forever. So Mordechai said to her, to save Klai Yisrael, I want you, go, I want you to go willingly to Achashverosh. Willingly to Achashverosh. If I go willingly to Achashverosh, Mordechai, after after Achashverosh dies, I can't even ma- come back to you and marry you, because I'm Asalabal. <laughs> I mean, it's bad enough I'm living with this man, but one day he'll die. I'll come back to you. You telling me to go willingly to the king? Then I'm going to be ushered to you forever. 
That's the message he sent back. I gave up everything. So the first time I was with him, I got pregnant, whatever it is, was by force. So I'm Potter. I had no choice. Now, he didn't call me, and I'm going to go? Then I'm usher to you forever. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to be stuck in this life with Achishverosh forever. That was her answer back. Not fear, fear. Fair answer after everything she went through. Very fair answer. So Mordechai should have said, oh, my poor baby, my poor niece, you're right. We'll send someone else. You know? Oh no. This is what he answered. So he says to her, Monachai says, tell this to Esther. You're worried about yourself that after Achishverosh dies, you want to come back to me? Nah. The big people in this world that get things done, they don't worry about themselves. They're not victims. Al Tadami bin Sheikh. Don't worry about your soul. That you're going to him willingly. What's Benaf Sheikh? Don't worry about your soul. Don't worry that you're going to be asked, you're going to be asked to me. Taka are going to be asked to me. Al Tadami bin Sheikh. Lihi molate bes hamelech mikola yehudim. Your job. Your job. Even though you went through everything that you went through, you went through Gehenna. Your job is not to worry about yourself. Life's not about yourself. Your job is to save the Jews. The Himalayat is Kol Yehudim, even if you lose me. Even if we lose each other forever. Kim HaKharesh Tacharishi. Because if you... The, the right English word is... Not stumble if you there's a good English word for this. If you hesitate. If you even hesitate, you don't jump in, but you hesitate. You think about it. I want you to know something, everyone in this room. You're a victim. You went through stuff. But don't you think for one second that if you don't stand up and save another Jew, that God doesn't have someone else to save them. He does. You grab the moment. Because if you don't, someone else will grab the moment. Probably the most comments I've ever heard about Ornava is, Wallstein, I, I thought about this long before you did. Shkayach. <laughs> hear it all the time. We always knew there was a need for girls to have a share in a place. So why didn't you do anything? So why didn't you do anything? Because the answer is it's a moment. Either seize the moment, you grab the moment, you don't. Apple, they said the same thing. What a big genius. So what Microsoft could have done Apple in a second. They didn't grab it. He grabbed it. So there's Apple. He grabbed it. It would be called Microsoft. So he said to her, yeah, you're going to lose me, but if you're going to waver, I want you to know, Hashem's going to save the Jews anyway, but this is your chance to be called Megillas Esther, Tynus Esther, because if you don't stand up, it'll be called Megillas Malka or Miriam. Someone's going to save the Jews. Hashem has many messengers. Va'at and you, Ubeis Avich, in your father's house, Tevedu will be lost forever. Umiyodea, and who knows? Even though you have to give me up, in the eighth kizayis he got the lemalchus. You lost everything. You slept with a guy. You lost me. You lost everything. But maybe that's why you're in the position that you're in to save the Jewish nation. Let me tell you guys something. 
at the end of Purim, of the whole story, which we'll get to, everybody did well, except for one person. Mordechai! We say it all out together. He left with dressed in purple wool with boots, and he became, he became to the king an advisor, and he became great. Why you who did why so I don't know the same call tank can't deal, right? What does it say about Esther? Esther was stuck in a prison for the rest of her life. Miguel's Esther says nothing about Esther. Yeah, Mordechai did very well. And the Jews did very well. Esther was stuck forever. Married to Achashverosh in a palace where no Jewish girl ever belonged. She gave everything, everything up. She knew that when she went to the king the second time willingly, that even after the king dies, she can't go back. So everybody walked out of the story champions, except for one. Esther Hamalka suffered for the rest of her life. And that's why it's called Miguel S. Esther. Because she was the victim. And the victim became the hero. And when the victim becomes a hero, they're no longer a victim. As long as you remain a victim, you're a victim. But when you take what you, what you went through and you use it to help others, you're no longer a victim. There was one other woman in the history of the world that did the same thing. And her name was Rachel Imenu. And she knew that when she gave the simonim to her sister Leah, that the minute they came into Eretz Yisrael, she'd be the second wife. And that Yaakov Avinu kept the mitzvahs in Eretz Yisrael, and therefore he could not have two sisters as a wife. So the second she gave her older sister the simonim, that meant that, that Leah married first, that meant that she married Yaakov the Isser. And she knew that the minute they crossed the border to Eretz Yisrael, she would die. And she would not be buried with Yaakov, and she would never ever see Binyamin. And she gave that up for her sister. And Rachel is the only person that we call Mama Rachel. Sarah Imenu, Rifki Imenu, Leah Imenu, the only one we call Mama was Rachel. Because she gave up everything for somebody else. Rachel and Esther. Tragic endings to a story. Ended up being the leaders of Klai And the whole portal, we're all partying. And everyone's happy. And you read it. Not Esther. Stuck forever in the palace of Achishverosh. And she knew it. And she begged Mordechai. And she said, but, but I wasn't invited. And if I go willingly, I'm done. I can never come back to you. And he said, it doesn't matter. It's not about you or me. It's about Klai Yisrael. And that's why he was so harsh. He should have said, well, Dava for you. Don't worry. Hashem never gives you a test you can't pass. Gamzu Lataiva. Right? That's what, what do you tell a girl that's about to give up her life and everything, right? She came to me, Rabbi Wallace, and I'd say, don't worry, we'll dive in. That's not what he said. He said, At ubeis avich tevedu. You and your family are lost. Says the Mepharshim, what was he talking about? Where did she come from? What did she come to fix? Sha'ol. She came from Sha'ol HaMelech. And Sha'ol HaMelech lost the Malchus. She came to fix. She came from Shaul Amelech to fix what Shaul did. What was Shaul's Avera, boys? What did he do wrong? He wavered. He wavered. He was told to kill every single animal. He made a cheshbin. Instead of just doing what he was told, he said, Kill animals for no reason? <coughs> Let's take all the animals 
and bring them for korbanos to Hashem. Isn't that much nicer? And in one of those animals was the king of Amalek, where Haman came from. Haman came from Amalek, from Agag. So the only one that could fix it was a person who did not waver. The Avera of Shaul was that he wavered. He made a cheshbin. His cheshbin was, why kill animals? Better, bring them for a carbon. <coughs> Esther also was trying to make a cheshbin. She sent back a message to Mordechai, and she said, what are you talking about? I should go willingly? It's going to cause that we can't be married. He said, don't make from cheshbonus when Klai Yisrael's life is on the line. It's not about me and you. It's about the nation. Shaul made that mistake. He made a cheshbon. So he said to her, don't, don't make the same mistake that he did. Because if you do, the reason you're here is to straighten out what he did. Well, the is your is your father's home. What was your father's home? Shaul HaMelech. You're going to make the same mistake that he made. And then it's just going to be wasted. You're not going to be able to fix what happened. And you won't be able to <laughs> destroy Haman. Because Shaul's mitzvah was to destroy Agog, was to destroy Amalek. And the reason he lost it was because he wavered and he went into his own thinking. So Mordechai said, hello? You're doing the same thing. The only way to destroy Haman, to destroy Amalek, not to waver, not to be a victim, not to feel sorry for yourself, but to stand up, get it done. If you look at this week's Pasha Zohar, and you look at the end of Pasha's Kisesa, take a look what we're going to read this week. This is what it says. And he's too tough for Rabbi Wallerstein. He doesn't understand my pain. If he went through what I went through, he wouldn't be talking like this. Well, man, you didn't go through the Holocaust. That you didn't go, no matter what you went through. You didn't watch your whole family get wiped out in front of you. Guess what? They don't feel like victims. They came and built Kleistro back. They're not walking around taking Prozac and going to therapy. They saw much worse than anyone in, in this generation will ever see. And they were abused in ways that we can't even imagine. Can't even imagine the experiments that they did on the Jewish men and women. We can't even imagine how worse they came back and said, we are not giving up. So let's take a look. Remember what Amalek did to you on the way out when you were leaving Egypt. Now, what should be the next plus? So what did they do to us? They tried to kill us. Right? They went to war. They tried to kill us. It's not what the post says. It's not what the post says. We're going to read it this week. What did they want to do to us? Asher korcha baderech. They happened, korcha comes from the word cold. They cooled us off. We were hot, man. We were the team. We were the giants. We couldn't lose. We were coming out of it trying. Wiped them all out, man. We were, on, we, were on the, we were on the high. And one comes this nation and says, we're not scared of you. So korcha comes from the word kerach. Not to kill us. Cool us down, man. You're not so hot. Who did they go after? They struck those who were Stragglers, the Ata Oye for your Gea, the weaklings. You're, you were tired, you were weak, you were exhausted. The low Yare Elohim, and you did not fear God. Say anybody, is there anything here about killing anyone? Say in the Pussy anything about killing anyone? You see anything here that says about killing anyone? Nope. Doesn't say anything about killing anyone. When you finish killing everyone else, wipe them out. There should be no memory of them. 
does not say one word that Amalek came to kill the Jews. Because that's not why we're supposed to wipe out Amalek. Because everybody came to kill the Jews. Sichon came to kill the Jews. We don't have a mitzvah to wipe them out. Moab came to kill the Jews. We don't have a mitzvah to wipe them out. The Mitzrayim wanted to kill the Jews. We don't have a mitzvah to wipe them out. It doesn't say anywhere here that Amalek came to kill the Jews. They came to do a lot worse. They came to cool us off. They came to make us think. They came to take away our year after Lokim. They came after the weak. They came after the victims. They couldn't get the guys that were inside the four clouds. They couldn't touch them. They were strong. They were surrounded by the Shekhinah. They couldn't get in there. They went after the stragglers. They went after the ones that were weak. That's not fair. That's what they did. They went after our Yerah Shemayim. They went to make us think. They, made, they went to make us cool us down. They went to take our Yerah Shemayim away. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, going after us physically, we can handle. You want to take our Yerah Shemayim away? You're going after the weak? You're going after the victims? The ones that are outside the cloud? Tim Zecha Malay. They have to be wiped off the face of the earth. <coughs> and Sha'ul, Sha'ul stumbled. And he hesitated. And he lost the Malchus forever. Because he hesitated. And Mordechai said to Esther, don't do the same thing. You're a victim. You lost your parents. You're from. They pulled you out of, out of hiding. You ended up having to be physically with the king. The low life. And now I'm asking you to go willingly to this low life. Don't hesitate. Don't become a victim. Get up and go. And she turned to Mordechai and her answer to him was, okay, I'll go. If I die, I die. It's the difference. If I live, I'm stuck. I am not free. <coughs> if I die, I die. But one thing you got to do for me, three days fasting, three days davening. That's the only weapons that I have as a Jew. Kaisrol has to daven for me. <coughs> Whatever happens, happens. And you all know what happened. He didn't want to let her in. He had no, she did not find favor in his eyes. The Malach made him, forced him to put his hand down. And then she went ahead and she did what she had to do. And there's even a medrash that Haman tried to kill her, whatever it was. She wasn't wavering anymore. She wasn't from Shaul anymore. She wasn't making that mistake. Now let's look at the end of the Megillah. The end of the Megillah. I was trying to figure it out tonight. I will figure it out by next week. The end of the Megillah says something unbelievable. Listen carefully. Batichtov Esther Hamalka. Who wrote the Megillah? Esther Hamalka. Vatichtoiv Esther Hamalka bas Avichayel u Mordechai HaYehudi. Who was written first here? Esther. Mordechai should have been written first. Vatichtoiv Mordechai by Esther. No. No, who gave up everything? Mordechai didn't give up everything. Esther gave up everything. Vatichtoiv Esther Hamalka and the first time it mentions her parents. I'm not sure if it's her father or her mother. Probably her mother. Maybe not. But Tikhtoiv Esther Hamalka Bas Abichayel. What a lesson, guys. When the Megillah begins and it talks about Esther Hamalka, it says, this is what it says about her. It doesn't give her a name at all. Says this following. She's Esther. Bas Dodo. The daughter of her uncle, because he adopted her. of She had no mother or father. Now all of a sudden at the end of the Megillah, she's got one. 
But took by the Esther Malka, Fasa Michayo. But we didn't say that in the beginning of the Megillah. Esther Basa Michayo. No, ain't no other aim. No Tati, no Mami. Who said the end of Megillah? Abichayo shows up. Who's Abichayo? So the Medrash says. What? In the middle of the Megillah, That's after the Yeshua. After the Yeshua. Yeah, it says that it's not the only one. It says it's in the beginning. When she was called to Hashem, it's a time when it was passed by the Chayyim. Just say it someplace in the middle. Let's take a look. But wait, when, it, when, it, when, it first, when she first comes to the picture, when she first comes to the picture, it doesn't say her name. Let's take a look where where it happens. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, let's see where it says it. When Mordechai was speaking to her, I think, and then he came back to Hasaf to uh, I think that's what it says. Yeah, but not by. Shh. Relax, I'll find it. One second. We'll find it, we'll find it, we'll find it. 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 Be'enov, and he marries her. Le'gid es es ama. Le'gid tornar v'nar lo ve'lamelech. Le'gid tor es to basa v'chayel doid mordechai. Asher lokach lo le'bas lo ve'lamelech. Lo'y b'ksha dover ki im as a sheyoy mehega es v'samelech. So why doesn't it say it when it first introduces her? Why over here all of a sudden? I guess because probably wanted to show how where she's coming from. So this is my homework for I have to find out for next week. No, but it's but it says before it says where she's coming where it starts where she's coming from, it says Ashihaglum Yushalayim, but he oimin as Hadasi, he Esther. It doesn't say and it says Bas Doide. It, it skips to Avichail. Why all of a sudden does Avichail show up on Tesvav? I guess somebody was trying to show that she was married to Mordechai. So didn't need to say no, that. no, so she's still married to Mordechai. Yes, yes. This is like Gia Esther, she wasn't married to Akashvarosh yet. So the shy is why all of a sudden Basai Bichayal over here? Maybe it could be because she was supposed to be announced. We'll, to, we'll look it up. Also, we'll look it up. Also says also the next no, I'm sure they didn't announce her Esther Basai Bichayal, then they would know she was a Jew. Also, they didn't announce her. It just, we're, the Megillah is telling us, the Megillah is telling us that it was Esther Basai Bichayal. Also, the fact that the Megillah says that Mordechai actually brought her up because her parents died when she was born. That's right, so... so, that's so, so maybe that's why I say it's not mother, maybe, because... No, so it says here, we to Esther Bas Avichal Doid Mordechai Asher Lokach Loi Lavas. It says it in the second time, too. It says it in both. So why, when it first introduces us, like, he oimin es adas, he Esther Bas Doid Doid. What happened to Avichal? That's, I was looking for it in the measure. I can't find an answer. I don't know. Could be that here she was already Maisa Nefesh, because here she was already going in front of the king, so until she was Moise and Nefesh, we didn't talk about who, where her parents were. I don't know. I have to look it up. I, I was looking before. I couldn't find it. What happened that it changed? The question is, what happened that it changed? All of a sudden, it called her Abichah. So I wanted to say that now, just like by Koirach, right? So he kept his name out, Aaron, but by Pinchas, when he did a good thing, so they brought the name in, so that when she did a good thing, in the beginning, she didn't do anything. She, it just says, and there was a girl, and that was her name, and she didn't do anything yet. But now that she went in front of the king, and now that she saved Klai Yisrael, now we're bringing the schus of her, fa- of her father. But I, I didn't see it. Oh, I was looking in the beginning. I didn't find it. But she was, but she was going in front of the king. So she was ready much the nefesh. In the beginning, she wasn't doing anything. I don't know. That's, I don't know. That's the answer. That's a logical answer. I was looking in the measure. I didn't find it yet, but I, we'll find it because it's an open kasha. Why here? They, why here? Not there. And who is Avichail? A woman's name or a man's name? Is it a mother or her father? I don't know. I'm looking. So I saw it today in a se- in a safer. It's a it's a yalkut. It's a, it's a it's a it's a mafoyish on a yalkut that says, and that might be the answer, Taka, that her mother and father's name was not Avichail. That Avi Chayel is talking about Avram Avinu. That I just want to say for today. Avi, my father, Chayel. It's talking about Avram Avinu. So it could be that in the beginning, when we're first talking about her and, and, and Mordechai, we knew she was Jewish. You don't have to tell me this, right? But not, when she went in front of the king, 
that we should still know that even when she went in front of the king, she was a tznuah. She was still a bas abichayel. She was still a bas of Avram Avinu. Maybe that's the terror. According to that Mufayrish, that Abichael is not the name of her mother and father. Abichael, that I, that I can show you, I have a safer at home that I saw it. In fact, it's in my car. That Abichael is just the name. Abichael, my father who was Chael, which means she was a Jew. She was from Avram Avinu. She was a Tznuah. She came from him. So the first time you're, you're introducing her, you're telling me there was this man who Eglish, he came from Eretz Israel. So of course she's a Jew. When she came in front of the king, it's a Chiddush to tell me she's still an Abichael. That she didn't put on the oil. And she didn't do what all the other Goyim did. So therefore she's called an Abichael. Here, after what she did, again, after what she did, she was Moise Nefesh, that's Avram Avinu, jumping into Kirshan Eish. So according to that shot that Abichael means Avram, maybe we can answer that that's why in these two places it is, and in that place it's not. Efshar. He doesn't bring this kasha down, but he just says Abichael means Avram Avinu. It wasn't the name of her parents. So it wasn't the name of her parents. It wouldn't say it in the first one. It would just say, it's not the name. When she went in front of the king, you should know she was Abichael. She, her father was still Abraham Avinu. She was very focused. Anyway, So she came first. But then the end, the last Pasuk. The last Pasuk um, in, in Perek Tess, which is, you know, is the last Perek Yud talks about the, the, the taxes, the three psukim, the tax that he put on. So there's, there's two last psukim. There's a last Pasuk in Tess, which is really the story. And the last Pasuk says like this. Umaymer Esther, Kiem divrei hapurim ha'ela, v'nichta basayfa. And the words of Esther validated all these regulations that we have on Purim, on Tansav Yonim, all the mitzvahs that we have on Purim, and it was recorded, basayfa, and it doesn't say anything about Mordechai. And then at the end, the last pasuk in in the in the medrash, ki marcha Yehudi mission lemelech hakshvirus v'gadol Yehudim v'ratz l'rav echav deyush tev v'amav deyush shalom v'chol zaroi, and doesn't say anything about Esther. So what, the, what what I believe the Megillah is telling us is Esther's ending didn't turn out good. Marcha's last pasuk, he was great. Ha Yehudi mission lemelech hakshvirus became great. V'ratz l'rav echav, and most people loved him. Doesn't say that about Esther, that she became great and most people loved her. Esther's greatness was in Pasuk Lama Beis. Umama Esther Kiyam Divrei Apurma Ela, Vinichta Basayfa. Esther's greatness was was Purim. Miguel Esther. That's her greatness, and that's why it's called after her. That's her. That's it. That's all it says about her. It doesn't say anything that she was great and that she walked out. With, with purple wool, nothing. She lost everything. No victim mentality. She did what she had to do with what she had. And she told the Jews, Purim, by the way, is the one yantar that after Mashiach will still be here. It's forever. Because somebody was mice and effort, she gave everything up. And the end of her story was not good. Everybody else is partying. Everybody else is like Yehudim Ha'isa Ayyavasim Not faster. And she was also to Mordechai. So, we have choices. Yeah, we can feel bad for ourselves. Everybody's got their stuff. And you can hacharesh tacharishi and you can not react and you cannot act and you can feel bad for yourself and you're lost and your whole family is lost. And everything you went through in life is lost because you didn't use it to help anyone else. It's just lost. It's just wasted. And guess what? If you think no one else is going to help some kid that needs help, Hashem will find someone else to help. But you have the chance to save that kid. What are you feeling sorry for yourself for? What ignited this year tonight was last night I was at a dinner. And a Rebbe came over to me. He said, I want your advice. I'm like, okay. What do you need? He said, a boy in my yeshiva came over to me two nights ago. And he said, Rebbe, can you step outside? I want to show you something. Okay. 
Rebbe stepped outside, boy in yeshiva, past high school, older guy, 20, 21, 22. He says, what you got? He rolls up his sleeve, he's got a tattoo. Shiva boy, got a tattoo. And the tattoo says the following. V O C. Three letters. V O C. Rebbe says to him, What's V O C? He says, Victim of Chinuch. You know why I am what I am today? You know why I'm off the derech? You know why I'm smoking pot? You know why I'm doing all the avarice I'm doing? Because I'm a victim of chinuch. So Rabbi said, Rabbi Wallace, what do you do with this guy? Should I take him out to eat? Should I bring him to my house for Shabbos? Should I coddle him? Should I be rough on him? You're a mechanic, what's your advice? And I felt the blood in the back of my head running up my neck. I said, I'll tell you what you should do with him. I said, there's a guy that Davids in Shemesh Shabbos. He's about 85, 89 years old. He's a Holocaust survivor. He's got numbers on his hand. Every fast day, every Rosh Chodesh, Yom Kippur Katon, <coughs> Every Ahab, Shavavim, tomorrow, I mean the next day, Zayn Adar, he fasts. Close to 95. He's got children, Close to 95. grandchildren, great grandchildren. He's not a victim of the Holocaust. He doesn't have a tattoo that says V-O-H. Just the opposite. They put the tattoos on our hands. And with those tattoos, and with those numbers, they came out of a holocaust. So you Rebbe hit you? She Rebbe yelled at you? Yeshiva threw you out? Bad, don't get me wrong. It's your choice if you're a victim. Or you become a hero. It's your choice if you say, my Rebbe continually is abusing me, or my parents completely are using me. As long as you're a victim, as long as you're feeling sorry for yourself, as long as you're sleeping and you feel really bad, then that person's still abusing you for 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, forever. Would you turn around and you take that abuse and you turn yourself into something? They lost. You're no longer a victim. You're a hero. That's Purim. That's why, it's, that's why it's forever. That's why it's for even after Mashiach. Esther did not look at herself as a victim. She became a hero. She became Esther Hamalka. She became Megillas Esther. She became Tanis Esther. Not another word was ever spoken to her about her after the Megillah. Oblivion. Married to Achashverosh. Oblivion. But she stood up in the moment that she was needed. I know a lot of people who went through the Holocaust. Relatives, my mother-in-law, a lot of people that I know that went through the Holocaust. Not one of them ever put a tattoo on their arm, VOH, victim of the Holocaust. Just the opposite. They said, if I, don't, if I am a victim, if I don't get married, if I don't put on tefillin, if I don't become from Hitler won, then I'm a victim. But if I fight them, I come back here, and even though they killed nine of my kids in front of me, and my wife and my father and my children's blood was running together with their mothers right in front of my face, I'm going to come to America. I'm going to marry another woman, and I'm going to have more children, and I'm going to bring up a mishpacha. And some of those Holocaust survivors never even told their children that they had a whole family before them. They didn't feel sorry for themselves. That stupid, ignoramus, idiot kid who put tattoo on his arm 
victim of Chinuch. He's a wuss, a wimp, a victim and a loser. You're the only one that can make yourself a victim, nobody else. So I said, you take him to meet this man. Let this man tell him what he went through. And then let him show him the tattoo that the Germans put on his hand. He didn't put no tattoo on his hand. That's the problem with this generation. Everybody's a victim. Everybody's a nebuch. It's a dead end. You're going nowhere. You're not changing the world. You're not helping the world. You're not helping yourself. You have no future if that's where you are. When you're going through the toughest time of your life, if you hesitate, you're lost everything. You can't hesitate. You got to stand up. You got to take a stand. You got to do what you got to do, even if it costs you everything. And that's why it's called Megillah's Esther, not Megillah's Purim, and not Megillah's Mordechai, and not Megillah's Haman. It's called Megillah's Esther because she earned it. And that's why Rachel Imeno is called Mama Rachel, because she earned it. She had a tough life, Rachel Imeno. She had a very tough life. She didn't even get buried with her own husband. She became Mama Rachel. She became the place that everybody goes that don't have children, that needs a shidduch, where men and women go to cry their hearts out to Mama Rachel because she wasn't a victim. She was a champion. She gave everything up for her sister. And that's what Purim is about, guys. <coughs> that's what Purim is about. And that's what gave Christ all the power to destroy Haman. Haman's life, his lifeline, who he is and who he was, was built on a hesitation, on a cheshbon that Shaul made. Had Shaul not made that cheshbon or that hesitation, Hashem said, kill all the animals, had he not hesitated, there'd be no Haman. And there'd be no Amalek. You can't hesitate. You can't become a victim. You have to stand up. And you have to do what you got to do. And that's what Esther did. And in her honor, We have Purim. And Mordechai became Mishnah Lamelech. And Esther went into oblivion. But she's not in oblivion, even though it doesn't say one word about her anymore, every single year. Where are you going? I'm going to hear Megillah's Esther. What'd you get? I bought a Megillah's Esther. And you can't miss a word. You can't miss a word. In Megillah's Esther, you have to hear every single word. There's no hesitation. There's no victim. There's no leaving anything out to hear every single word. That's Purim. I've never given this year before. And it was really ignited when this Rebbe came over to me and told me what this boy did. What a silly boy. What a weak boy. He doesn't understand Miguel Esther to do this right before Purim. So if you ever feel like you're a victim, go to Shem Shabbos. Look him up. He's fasting. He's upstairs in the fasting minion by Vayichal. Short little man. He's 95. Ask him if you should feel sorry for yourself. Ask him to see his numbers. You won't feel sorry for yourself anymore. Das is Purim. May this year, may we celebrate Purim after Mashiach. Slacha.